Hello and welcome everybody to the Pixelogic Zebra channel. I am Foligon and tonight we're going to be continuing to work on our thick boy, our thick tiger, a uh, original concept. I am Foligon okay. and tonight we're going to be continuing I mean, to work on our thick boy. Okay. Shush, shush me. Forgot to mute that. <laughs> My bad. Uh, we're going to be uh, working on this 2D concept by Dan Kelby. Let me open up my chat back up real fast. There we go. Cool. So uh, say something in chat if you guys can hear me, if everything's good on your end, and we can go ahead and get started here in just a second. But like I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by myself. Uh, I'm Foligon. Uh, this is Pixel on ZBrush channel. Click that follow or subscribe button down below wherever you guys are watching here on Twitch, uh, Facebook, or YouTube. If you have not already, there's a ton of awesome people that stream here. And yeah, if you guys want to check out more of my stuff, uh, you guys can check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Foligon, where I have a bunch of tutorials uh, and a bunch of other stuff, ZBrush and digital sculpting related as well as, let's see, gumroad.com slash Foligon, which I will share in chat because the URL thing is hidden up there at the top of the screen. So again, if you guys can hear me all right, say something in chat, and I'll just go ahead and get started. And as long as we don't have any problems, we'll continue on from there. But right before I clicked play, I started blocking out this little hand over here. I'll change my material here. And that's probably where we're going to start tonight. There's a bunch of other stuff on this dude that I need to do. But so far, I have blocked out a majority of the large scale shapes. A lot of what we're going to be doing from here forward, minus kind of the hand, uh, and this bag as well is another thing that we need to start blocking out. Uh, from there, it'll just be kind of the, the refinement stage for a little while, and then moving on into finishing this boy up. But yeah, you can see here that I've kind of already done a decent amount of work for one of his arms over here, and I've kind of started on. Uh, this one is still just kind of a tube of geometry, low poly, of course. So more work kind of needs to happen everywhere, but you know, we got a lot of the, a lot of stuff going on in the face. Not quite on uh, on concept here. We're missing some stripes, of course, and just some very small proportional differences. Stuff like where the eyebrows need to be, and just scale differences between the distance between his eyes and the top of his head. It's a little bit shorter there, and just a couple other things. But yeah, like I said, we're going to continue on uh, by starting with our hand. Feel free to ask any questions in chat. Or if you're watching this later on YouTube or wherever, feel free to put any questions down in the comments section. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Let's go turn off perspective and get down here and I'll show you what we got going on with our hand that I just started blocking out. <laughs> we'll flip this bad boy around. Draked and Jake, welcome guys, how you doing? And Mosin, uh, hello from Iran, well, welcome. How are you guys doing? All right, so here is my blocked out palm and a few uh, few quick rough fingers. So let me uh, scrub through my undo history so you guys can see uh, exactly what's going on here. So very simple, started off with just a sphere, pretty, pretty straightforward, squashed it and just started pushing and pulling stuff around with a move brush using a clay tubes brush, just kind of sculpting that up into the basic shape that we see now, and just kind of refining and making some small changes from there. And this is where we are now. So a relatively basic shape. Uh, it's gonna change quite a bit more from here moving forward. Uh, so we got that, and then we got these fingers, which are literally just spheres that I, I um, extruded a little bit. I made them a little bit longer. So there, there's one. And then I just duplicated it, moved them around, scaled them, and remeshed them really quickly. So I like to keep my fingers separated on my hands. I don't like to have them all connected and touching, uh, like connected to the actual geometry. It's fine if they touch. But I, like, I do like to keep them spread out. Makes it easier to work. Uh, but yeah, let's see here. Where should we begin? Probably just some tweak in here with the fingers. Uh, kind of the overall gesture and form that I'm noticing here is a general, um, from the base of the finger to the tip, it goes from thin to thick. 
So I'm going to try to get a little bit of that in there, as well as just kind of play with the overall shape of these fingers to try to make them a little bit more visually interesting. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna start here by just smoothing some of these out, playing around with the shape a little bit. Uh, planning on buying a graphics tablet without the screen. Sounds like a good time. It's always fun to buy a new tablet. Uh, I want to know if it makes me improve better. Uh, I would say no. No. I, I, well, I, I don't know what you mean by improve better. Think of it this way. Um, you could sculpt with a rock, or you could sculpt with a chisel, right? And the chisel, I'm talking about like traditional sculpting, uh, a, a chisel is going to be, you know, a lot more helpful than banging a rock on something, right? So the tool is definitely going to help you, but, you know, in terms of everything else, it is just that. It's just a tool. So it's not going to immediately improve you or, you know, make you better. That'll be up to you. But it, uh, it will make the task easier. I think you should always try to surround yourself with the, the best tools that you can, you know, uh, possibly have, afford, whatever you want to call it. But yeah. Uh, H Troll, what's up? Lyab, Adrian, Sergey, Longu, which looks a little bit like tongue with an L, and Ali. Welcome, guys. How you got? Dang, we got we got everybody here tonight. How's everybody doing? Uh, I'm from Vietnam. Well, welcome. Vietnam, Barcelona. Welcome, everybody. I am in Cincinnati, Ohio, in the United States. Well, welcome, guys. Uh, Foligon is one of my favorite ZBrush artists lately. Well, thank you, man. That's very kind of you. Welcome to the stream. All right. Let's see what we got going on with this hand. Let's start pushing and pulling and moving and grooving and a little bit less grooving. More. If there was a groove brush, I'd probably use that. But there's not, so we'll stick with the move brush. All right. Let's just take a quick assessment here of everything we got going on. It's pretty messy, uh, but during the stage, during the blockout stage, pff, doesn't matter. Keep it messy. Honestly, it keeps you from uh, worrying too much about, you know, focusing on things you shouldn't be at this stage. And for me, I find that to be very helpful. Let me try to get this line a little tighter. I don't know, that's feeling a lot better, I think. Try to get away from some parallels down here. So kind of try to pull that line around a little bit, get some more curve going on. You're very welcome, Leo. No problem, man. Uh, once you get to, used to a tablet, it's amazing. It is, it is. I agree. I love my tablet. Use it every day. All day, every day. Almost. <laughs> Katie, what's up? New Orleans? Well, hello, hello. What's what's going on in New Orleans? Or should I say New Orleans? Or is it New Orleans? I don't know. I don't know how that works. So, uh, another great reason why I like to keep my fingers separated is that you can work on one finger for a little bit and then duplicate it. You don't have to worry about um, redoing the same work over and over and over again. You can just do it once, duplicate, you're good to go. So let's uh, simplify this. Let's see, I want that first. Boom, boom, that's fine. And sure, somewhere about there. Make this work. And just to make this crease that bend a little bit better. Uh, you know what? Honestly, his fingers are pretty dang curved. But we'll make do with what we got for now. So let me see here. So typically what I like to do in my fingers, I am trying to get a little bit of some thick to thin going on here. So trying to make them a little bit thicker as they go out, as well as I want to make these a bit flatter on top and a little bit more rounded on the bottom. So let's play around with this shape for a little bit and see what we can do. 
Hello from LA! Dang, we got people all over tonight. Mexico as well. What's going on, Angel? Ghost of Christmas Future. Welcome back, man. You're pretty sure there is a groove brush? <laughs> What, are you, what am I looking for it to do? I'm looking for it to give me some personal, some personal rhythm that I, I lack. And down here on the bottom of this finger, I'm gonna make this a little bit more rounded, as well as, let's see, it's gonna be a little bit different down here because his finger is clenching, or his fingers, his whole hand, is holding and clenching this bag. But on this one, honestly, the way that's positioned, it's a little floaty and that kind of annoys me. But we'll see what we can do with that uh, a little bit later. I've already blocked out that jar. I have it over here. Boop, it's upside down. Or actually, we are upside down right now. But yes, I already have this jar kind of blocked out. We'll get that and get to that and positioning this with the hand a little bit later. We'll play around with our hand here for a while, I think. But yes, so we got some other fingers. Let's shape this one up just a little bit more. Is there anything that I really want to add here before I continue on? You know what? I think it would be cool. Let's just uh, turn on Lazy Mouse here for a moment. And maybe just try to plane out the top of this just a tad. And I'll soften this later, but let me get, let me play around here. Let me play in the mud. See if we can make something a little bit more visually interesting. Break up our form. Getting away from everything looking exactly the same, which is always good. Unless it adds to the design in some way. All right. And like I said, you know, I'm not worried about the geometry getting messy during this stage. It's actually a little bit helpful sometimes. Keep you focused on what's important. And this, uh, this is just like way too much. And I'll delete those and we will whoop, give me a slice right down the middle, something like that. It's not the best slice in the world. We'll try that. And a quick Z remesh, keep groups on, and around 0.5 should be, should be more than enough. Yes, hello fellow human being. Hello, what's going on? Six Syndicate. How are you doing, man? Chris! Chris Freeze! Ah, Chris, you're so close. You could have you could have made your username Chris Frieza. That's just a missed opportunity right there. Alright, I'm liking that. Uh, like I said, the edges are probably a little too hard, but we'll hold on to him for now. I think that'll be a good starting point. If anything. Oh, come on, turn on. Where you at? There you go. Let's see here. Scale that up just a tad. And go from there. And I'm keep I'm gonna keep these a little bit spread out right now as well, just to make this easier. Yeah, let's duplicate this. I'm just control clicking and dragging with my transpose line. And from what I can see, he only has three fingers. Typically I I don't like to do that, but I think it's actually going to make this hand a bit easier to manage. So I'm gonna go with what I'm seeing here. Let's also scale you down. And you know, your fingers aren't perfectly straight, nor is your palm. Especially in a relaxed position, you typically have this nice kind of gestural curve with it. If you hang your hand down loose at your side, uh, Vikram, hello from India. Well, welcome. And Soul Rising Suns. <laughs> awesome name. And what is a normal safe number of polys? Uh, I d <laughs> that's, 
That's a funny question. Uh, a normal safe number? I don't know, man. Um, it kind of depends what your computer can handle. Uh, I can handle at most maybe like three or four hundred million polys in a scene. Probably like the that's probably like the upper limit of of me, uh, or at least that's the, I should say that's like the upper limit of what I've worked with. Probably around three fifty or so for some of like the most like largest things that I've done. But of course that all gets lowered or decimated uh, in some way later on. But yeah, it just totally depends on the, you know, what it's going to be needed for, or if you're just looking for like, for your own workspace, it just kind of depends on what you can, your computer can handle. Let's see, let's get this thumb in there. Screw. Give me you. Rotate and move you around. And I'm just going to turn this on so I can figure out the basic position of where I want that. Alright, now I'm going to delete these. Delete my old fingies. Don't need them anymore. So we've added a little bit more visual interest here to our fingers and our palm is starting to shape up a little bit better. Uh, let me look at this kind of from this angle. This needs to rotate in a bit. Look at your own hands, it's helpful. Even though this is kind of like a stylized thing, there's always some anatomical truths in there. And... So you might be wondering why I've only done this singular bend in these fingers. And that's because for the most part, in a relaxed hand or a lot of different poses with hands, the bend of that last digit, that, that kind of hurts to do, but that one, uh, it's, it's not, um, a lot of the time in stylized characters at least, it's really not that big of a deal. Unless you're doing some like really crazy finger pose, uh, a lot of the time you can even represent like a lot of stuff with just a gradual curve. So for the most part, I'm not going to worry about it too much. And then uh, I'll probably end up rounding a lot of these out quite a bit as well. So I have a feeling it's going to kind of become a little bit more tuby as we move forward here. So I don't think it'll matter too much. But either way, I think we can go ahead and maybe merge these down. Let's just see how it's looking proportionally with our dude here. Our dude here. Turn on perspective. And our hand is maybe a little big or just our fingers are. Um, let me, let's go into transpose master and see if we can fix some of that real quick here. Last Shadow, what's up? And Chris, hello, Tygo, 823 Meg. What is up, guys? Uh, I'm using 2019, yes, up here in the left corner. ZBrush, 2019. You can also, I was gonna say, you can also see my name, but it's not up there right now. It might only be up there when you, when you start. Uh, transpose, long time since you've seen that. Are you talking about the transpose line or T-pose master, transpose master? I use, tr I use both all the time. They're awesome. I love me the tra transpose line. Awesome tool. Probably my, one of my favorite things in ZBrush. All right, so let's scale this down a little bit. Fingers are gonna be scaled down. Faux show. Ooh, come on, go away. And we'll just scale on down, please. Finger length is also a bit long. All right. Just make some quick adjustments here. And I can do more of this outside of Transpose Master. But yeah, relatively simple kind of shapes going on here. Really, it's just a matter of like taking the time to build up the form uh, slowly over time. 
hands are, in my opinion, hands are really tough. Um, I don't really like sculpting hands because I feel like I have equally sculpted enough hands for the rest of my life, but at the same time, I've not sculpted nearly enough hands to, to be good enough at it. So I have, a, I have a lot more practice that I should be doing in hands, but I just don't like sculpting hands. <laughs> I have a, a pretty good base mesh that I use now for a lot of stuff, so I tend to use that as much as I can. We'll just transpose back really fast. Jasmine, what is going on? The uh, the transpose line, gotcha, gotcha. I actually have a video over on my YouTube channel talking about all the secret hidden functions with the transpose line, such as stuff like inflate and deflate and all sorts of uh, like bend uh, bend curve def deformations, all sorts of like little secret hidden tricks that are of course in the documentation uh, for the software, but you know, who's gonna? <laughs> I'm just gonna read that when you got a YouTube, a YouTube video, specifically my YouTube video. It's a good one. You should definitely check it out. All, all secrets revealed. Secrets. <laughs> I use that term lightly. All right, let's move that thumb up. Typically, you're coming a little past that, um, that knuckle there, but this is kind of relaxed a little bit. So yeah, we'll, we'll stick with that for now. Let me delete this as well. All right, uh, how big is your Cintiq, if you know what I mean? Uh, this is a 24 or 27 inch. I think it's the 27, uh, if that is one that they make. I believe it is. It's the biggest one that they used to make back, back uh, two or three years ago. So I believe, I believe 27 inches. But it's actually bigger than that. That's just the measurement from corner of the screen to corner of the screen. But um, as you can see here, there's quite a bit of white or black space. It's like a big, big old border around the thing. So it's got a lot of extra room. House all the all the high tech in there. Ooh, fix that. All right. Uh, so from here, I say we merge our hand and fingers together. I'm gonna take it to the next stage. So let's uh, zoom in here real quick again. Anything I wanna change on my palm? I don't think so. I think for the most part, we kind of got the kind of basic shape here. I kind of have a pretty strong transition from the kind of like hit going on one, two, from wrist to back of the palm, but I'm okay with that. I like to exaggerate that a little bit, especially on some big boys. So yeah, let's uh, merge these fingers down. Give them a couple sub divs here, delete lower, cause I don't want them. I just wanted the smooth geo. And then, uh, you know what, let's, um, let's see here. Let's do a quick mask. Just make sure that I leave some room up here for for some of this. And then sometimes what I like to do, I'll, I'll do this after dynameshing them or before. It doesn't really matter. I, I'll do it after. Here, let's just do a quick dynamesh. 500 at this scale. It's pretty small. But I think that gets the job done. That's retaining most of the important shapes. So from here, let's, uh, let's do like a quick little knuckle carve in. Probably a little deep, but that's okay. And I'll just start kind of clay tubes and blocking out that shape. And this is a very simplistic form, so I am not going to do a lot here. I just want like an exaggerated hit that I will smooth out later, essentially. It's not gonna be much. But we need to transition our palm into our fingers. So that's the important thing here. Oop. Let's see. And don't forget your knuckle on your thumb, which is actually kind of a weird one, depending on the angle that your finger's at. That can be more or less visible. 
a little bit more blending there. Uh, for the, you know, this probably connected a little bit high there, but honestly, I don't think it'll matter because both of these hands are in a pretty similar position for their thumbs. So I think I'll just leave it. And yeah, let's go on from here. So let me do a couple quick pinches in here. So I am right now just exaggerating that transition. It's very strong right now. Somewhat intentional. I didn't mean to carve in quite that much, like I said, but who's got time to press the undo? Control Z is literally right next to where I keep my hand on my keyboard, but at the same time, you know, we can just do other stuff to fix it. So I really don't undo all that much. A lot of the time it's just in, like, if, if something like really bad happens, I'll undo. But for the most part, like if I, you know, do something like I did where I carved in more than I wanted to, I'm not, you know, if it's really bad, I might undo it and go back and retry. But, you know, for the most part, it's like, eh, I can just, you know, I can fix that. Give me, give me just a minute. And typically it ends up better for that uh, most of the time, just because you're, you know, spending more time refining your form while working on fixing stuff. So I'm also, you know, I've already fixed what I need to at this point. I'm just kind of defining the knuckle transition a little bit more here for our three fingered palm. And it's a little thick up through here, but it's such a fat hand that I don't know if it'll matter too much. Let me, let me see. Let me see this, this guy here. Whoops, wrong brush. See, like something like that. I didn't mean to use that brush, so I'll undo that. Little things like that. Let me just move that in a little bit more. And we're getting a little awkward pinch up here, but like I said, this is gonna transition pretty smoothly, I think. So yeah, let's um, let's do that next. I'm gonna duplicate my hand, make sure that it's the only two objects visible, and run a quick Z mesh on this. I think 1K should be enough for something like this, uh, but yeah. I'm doing this so that I can refine the form and start cleaning it up a little bit more so that we can get closer to the final shape of our hand. You can start seeing what this looks like. And from here, I will subdivide, do a couple quick projections, but anything more than that really isn't needed. All right, so now we got all that merged together, dynameshed and blended a little bit, although not extremely uh, clean at this stage by any means. So now is probably the point where I would just continue refining the form more and more until I got it to exactly where I wanted it. So I would just take some time here going around, still probably like transitions like this, I might sharpen up a little bit more. But like I said, his hand is so, such a smooth shape that for the most part, it doesn't really need it. One thing that is nice about sculpting hands, I guess not three fingered hands, but it's still helpful. You got an awesome reference directly in front of you at all times. So you can use that. This is uh, too flat here. This needs to come down quite a bit more. Get more of an angle to it. Uh, other than that, you know, just a little bit more clean up here and we can move on to something else. Are you sculpting the hand completely or do you wait until after posing to add details? I don't like sculpting hands either. Um, I will, I, I don't know what you mean by completely. Really, there's not a lot going on here. Um, but like if you mean stuff like fingernails and that kind of thing, yeah, I would definitely do that before posing um, because that's gonna be very tedious to do one at a time. 
That would definitely, yeah, see how that merged together there? <laughs> I think it's more so than I realized. Let me, let me see what we can do here. But yeah, if, you're, if, you, if you mean like texturing or something like that, there might be certain areas where you, uh, like if you're working on like a hyper-realistic hand, you might want to um, wait for certain areas to do textures after, because if you uh, are sculpting something and you know you're gonna pose it in a particular way, if your hands are differently posed, after you do textures and then pose the hand, some of those could stretch and warp and you know, if you have to continue sculpting, which if you're posing something, you pretty much always have some form of correction you have to do at some point. So uh, you'll, you'll probably lose some of that texture information there. It just kind of depends uh, what you mean by finishing, I guess, finishing the hands, but yeah. I'd say that's probably how I'd handle it. Other than that, this is like way too, um, much of a sharp transition. I do, I did want to get some more room in there, but uh, it's getting like too pinched down through there. So let's see, let's do a quick mask. Let's just try to round this out ever so slightly. stretched in here with our polys, but that's fine. We can solve that with another quick remesh later on. I always accidentally screw up my focal shift on my move brush because if I'm, I use the space bar. So what I do to change my brush size is I slap my hand on the space bar and just move this immediately because when you press the space bar, the draw size slider is directly under your mouse, which is nice. There's a bunch of other options in here that I use, but the draw size is the most uh, common one. But if you use it too low down here at the bottom of the screen, the menu can't fit down there. So it ends up putting it out of the way. And then I accidentally like grab something else that I don't mean to because I'm trying to work too fast. But right now we should be good. So I think I'm gonna leave that as is for now. I think we've defined, you know, I think we've overly, uh, um, overly defined this for sure. Uh, so there's gonna be some, quite a bit of, you know, rounding out the shape and everything else. But I will wait until I get more into uh, the actual pose of the hand to do that. So maybe that's what uh, you, you were, talking about there by waiting until later to finish the hand. So for the most part though, uh, we have kind of like the major shapes in there. And now uh, essentially I can start posing each hand individually into where it needs to be. And then I can kind of round out and match the silhouette of what I'm seeing a little bit more as well as kind of infer what I can based on what I can see from each hand. But now let's go ahead and make a quick bag. Bag should be I think pretty easy. Bags are, anything fabric is typically pretty fun in my opinion. And bags are pretty easy. And they're, I think, easy to make look good. So let's grab a, we got a bottle here. Let's duplicate that. And we will, oh, you know what? Let me uh, put an updated version up here with one of our hands. We'll do the, We'll duplicate the other hand and probably pose that one first. Let's put our thick boy up here. And Bagaroonie. All right, so let me go down into our initialize palette and just click on Q cube, a quick cube. And we'll use this as our starting point. So a relatively simple shape there is some perspective warping going on with this, so I think it's a bit longer than what it looks here. It looks to be at about a 45 degree angle based on what I can see of the bag. So we'll try to find an appropriate amount of uh, length there. We'll probably have to tweak and play with it a little bit. 
make this a little bit wider on the bottom. And maybe a little bit of roundness. It's a little tough to tell. So let's try bowing that out a little bit. And then what I'll do is to get that edge a little bit more crisp on the outside, I'll put in an edge loop here. And that might be a little too close. You know what, let's, let's stick with that. Let's keep that. All right, so very quickly, you know, we're starting to get up to the basic shape of the bag, just using a few quick tricks here in ZBrush. And then uh, for the top and bottom, I'll have to do the same thing to uh, make that a little bit more rounded. Now with the Z modeler brush, you can of course insert, oh, we don't want perspective on here. We can of course insert poly loops with a Z modeler function, which I uh, also do quite frequently. But in this case, this is just a little bit faster. And the bottom, and maybe the top is a little bit more rounded. So let's also get that top a little bit more rounded. How do I remove poly paint from my model? Uh, you can do that by, if you look over here under tool, subtool, you'll have all your subtools over here. See this paintbrush icon? I'll very quickly apply a different material. And here, I'll do a basic material, or you know, I'll make it a little bit different here. Let me do that quick save. So we got this uh, reflective toy plastic material on here. So what you wanna do is you wanna turn off this paintbrush icon in your subtool palette. So that will turn that off, but you will still have whatever material and color that you currently have selected displayed on your object. So what you can do is just select some basic material uh, like the basic material, which is a great one for sculpting. If you guys uh, don't have uh, any other materials that you like using, and then just switch your color to white and you should be good to go. If you would like to uh, make it a little bit easier so you can like switch your colors around, you can just apply all of that, your material and color, by coming up into your brush settings up here. This, is, this controls what your brush does, all your different brushes. And if I switch my brushes, you can see how each one has different stuff activated as I flip through my brushes. Switch on over to your standard brush and uncheck everything except for MRGB and just click on fill object and that will apply whatever material and color you have selected as long as your RGB intensity is at 100. So that's what I like to do. Try that out. And let's maybe round out our edges a little bit here as we continue forward. Use the mask pen. A lot of the time I try not to use symmetry while doing uh, anything with the Z modeler brush because it can often cause crashes. So if you see me swap on and off between symmetry, that is why you can get that back by using uh, some mirroring functions, which are even easier to do in 2019 now, which is very nice. Uh, the flat color and fill color. Uh, flat color, I think you mean the uh, flat material, I believe is what you're referring to. Uh, flat color material. Yes, the flat shade. So if you apply that, if you click MRGB and fill that in, that will apply whatever material you still have selected. So it's kind of like the same thing, but it won't change your color that you have selected. So I just like to keep it off because it's almost the exact same interaction. Uh, let's see, what else do we need for this bag? We have the basic shape, but obviously we're gonna need some more doohickeys here and there. Let's make this a little bit wider. Coming down. Play with that a little bit. Let's get some straps in here. And a couple other pockets, zippers. 
And really that's about it. So pretty simple shape. And I really like the tension that we're gonna get here. That'll be fun to do. So let's duplicate this. I'm gonna use my cube tube brush. This is a custom brush that I made. It's a tri-parts welded brush. You can see what the brush looks like here. It's essentially just a simple tube of geometry, uh, but it's very clean and has very nice end caps uh, for it. And if you guys want this brush, uh, it is on my Gumroad at gumroad.com slash Folygon, uh, and you get that brush plus a few other curved brushes. It's in my curved brushes, appropriately named. <laughs> uh, again, that's on my Gumroad. You can just Google Gumroad Folygon and you'll probably find it. Uh, but yeah, so let's see, how do I wanna do this? I think, I think I'm going to try to use the as line function. Uh, my, sh my menus are flipped on me. It's a little annoying, fix that later. Turn on as line and let's see, where's that connected? Somewhere around here. I'm just gonna pull that up. And the reason I'm using this as line function is because it keeps it nice and straight. So we should be able to represent the tension of that strap a little bit more accurately here. And then if I turn down my Z intensity, that will make that a little flatter. I'm not sure why it got longer, but that's fine. It's not a big deal. And let me see here. I should be able to continue this stroke. Let, let me see if it does it. It's, yeah, it's gonna pull over to the side. That's fine. Let's just click accept that. So that'll delete our um, curve there. And then what I'll do, whoops, just using my mask lasso is rotate this just a little bit across my symmetrical plane. And then I can just run a mirror and weld operation. Whoop, we're a little bit too close to the symmetrical plane. Mirror and weld again. There we go. We got the beginnings of a nice quick strap. I'll probably delete these two edge loops. Beautiful, beautiful indeed. All right, so let's rotate this in. Try to find a good place for that. And of course we can mirror this over to the other side of the bag as well to make this even easier so we don't have to redo that. I think, um, let me bevel this. To make that transition a little bit more clean. There we go. Honestly, that's gonna be up in his hand so it won't matter too much, but just for, uh, for myself. I mean, delete a couple extra excess edge loops, I'll say. Things that we don't really need. For the most part, that's gonna be pretty straight, so I think it'll be fine. And then we want this geometry here kind of going inside the bag, and then we'll sculpt a hole for that to fit through. So let's see, this kind of does one of these. Position that a little bit. Make sure this is feeling nice and taut. Could be holding the weight well. And let's just play around with uh, lining up our geometry a little bit better here. I think for the most part we're we're pretty much there. Uh, for our edges, what I'm going to do is use a bevel. Uh, we could crease our edges, but I think that'll be a little too tight of an edge and the shape will end up being a bit weird. So let me inflate this a little bit because I think it's, eh, you know what, I was going to say it's too thin, but it'll make sense after we bevel here. So let me bevel edge loop complete, maybe something about right there. And then when we smooth this out, you'll see that it kind of retains that edge a little bit better and we get kind of a nice crisp uh, change from one plane to the next, but it's still a little bit rounded, so it kind of retains that a little bit. Let me scooch this over too. Oh, got my fat monitor in the way. All right, so let's see what else, what else, what else. 
go ahead and mirror this over to the other side. Mirror and weld, we'll do Z, the Z axis. Well, I cannot click on that with my mouse to save my life. Boom. And let me turn on transform symmetry for the Z axis. I'm going to move these a bit closer together, something like that. So now I have transform X and Z on. So now I can manipulate all of this at the same time, and I'll still keep it symmetrical. Uh, but obviously, we're going to want to break symmetry after we start getting that into position and posing that up a little bit more. Let's, uh, let's subdivide our bag a little bit just to see what that is starting to look like. And we could even start for stuff like the pockets on the side here, as well as these zippers, it might be better to start kind of breaking symmetry before we create some of that because uh, st for stuff like folds and any form changes, if we manipulate one part of the bag, we're, we're going to have to manipulate the additional pieces that we've created. So if we manipulate the bag first, and then create stuff like pockets that will already have those folds baked into it. If that doesn't make sense, I'll show you right now how we can do that. So I'm just going to turn off symmetry and uh, start blocking in some of the larger shapes that we want representing some of the folds for our bag. And these are going to be pretty simple transitions for the most part. Let's see. Kind of do one, let's see, subdivide one more time. For the most part, I'm going to do some like pretty tight stuff like this, and then probably smooth it out a bit. I think that transitions a little much. So let's make sure that that's working well. For the most part, just using a pinch brush here which is a default brush, as well as the uh, mech cut brush, which I believe you can get on the Pixel Logic website. I think I found it in their download center or on uh, one of the forum posts. I'm not sure, I can't remember. Somebody asked me about that recently. Couldn't remember where I found him. Let's just continue on here. Let me use the move brush with Accu Curve as well. Oh, and we'll just do a few quick kind of form changes here. I can't see the whole bag, so I'll have to take some liberties here with some just quick little form changes. Nothing too crazy. And a lot of this, we might even knock back even more. This kind of material tends to have some really like sharp folds, but like we could look up some reference. I think for the style that we're going uh, we're going for here, we kind of want to probably keep this a bit more simple, kind of like what I did with the basic fold that I blocked out on this sleeve. It's kind of like a simple shape right now, nothing too fancy. Kind of a masked and pulled out geometry. Kind of the same deal here. But exaggerating and then knocking that back after we're done. Pretty simple formula. Uh, how did I go about making those straps? You literally missed it by um, by like five minutes. Uh, but no worries, everything gets uploaded over on uh, over on YouTube. So if you want to check that out, I think there's a link somewhere up here at the top of the screen. But also, um, as a quick quick rundown, I just used a. If you're familiar with 
uh, curve brushes in ZBrush, I used a curve brush that is available on my Gumroad, which is just gumroad.com slash polygon. It's this, uh, these curve brushes here. So scroll down, almost on the very bottom left-hand corner, curve brushes, there's uh, four of them in there. One of them being that, that curve brush here. And then I used the as line feature and just kind of pulled those out. Pretty simple. Simple and clean. And I might even have a, uh, if you're like in a rush for learning how to make some straps, I believe I have a tutorial over on uh, my YouTube channel. Already. All right. Let me just do some quick, additional, really strong form breaks. Really break stuff down. So when you use the pinch brush, the more you pinch, the more your geometry becomes warped. And eventually it'll get to a point where it's just the geometry is so warped it's no longer really um, really usable sculpturally and at that point that's when I'll do a quick little remesh kind of like what I just did all right so we got the basic shape here like I said I also wanted to soften up some of the edges here so I'm gonna take the time to do some of that in a couple places but I think that's feeling all right. Let's see here. Let's do some quick pockets. I'll use the mask pen. Draw out a marquee selection like so. And, and I don't know what that voice is, but let's kind of bloop that in there. So this is what I was talking about in terms of the form of the bag, being able to uh, inform the shape of our pockets and zippers and everything else that we're gonna put on here a little bit. So from here, we can use the extraction menu here, or we can manually do it. I prefer to manually do it because it keeps things a little bit more uh, in your control. Let's see here. Get rid of some of that excess. And let's see if Z-Remesher will be nice to us really fast. Let's use this. Let's use what we already got. So I'm going to do a Z-Modeler, extrude all polygons, and just pull that in. A quick little pull in. Oop, give me that one. One pocket. Ooh, pocket. All right, so we got that kind of started there. Uh, I'm just gonna keep that how it is. I'm not gonna do anything else to that right now. If anything, I might like round out the bottom corner or just round out the corners all together. Really, it's not, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Let's see, it's a quick test. Yeah, something like that. I think that'll work fine. And then for the top of this, let's turn off our straps and use the same brush that we did before the curved tube brush. And let me just draw that out and try to match the shape that I'm seeing a little bit. a few changes here we'll do some other stuff like the trim for the bag as well as the holes for the straps and a few other things really just like starting to complicate the uh, form here get some more parts and pieces in there it'll start to uh, look better the more we have uh, don't have zebrush at the moment have a mud box no worries, man. Yep, the link is right up there. YouTube slash Falligan. No problem. Can you explain how to use the smooth brush to smooth parts of a model 
without smoothing hard or creased edges. Hmm, interesting. It's hard to know exactly what you need based on that. Hard or creased edges. So probably, depending on what your geometry looks like, probably the easiest thing for you. So for instance, I'll add some subdivs to this. So you said hard or creased edges. So I don't necessarily have a creased edge here, but let's say I want to retain this hard edge, but I got some, some goobers up here that I want to smooth and clean up on this surface. I recommend just using masking. So uh, you can use your, your mask pen brush to mask out the area that you want to smooth an effect and only work on that. So you could do something like this, you know, mask that out, invert your mask, and then you know go through and smooth or maybe use a trim brush or an H polish brush. So you can do something like that. Or uh, I typically use the mask lasso brush a lot. So you could mask off what you don't want here and you know, do a quick little mask lasso. And then, you know, same thing, trim, uh, smooth, all that good stuff. I don't believe there is a mask feature that's going to mask off your creased edges for you. Uh, but if you come down into your mask menu down here, you might be able to play around with some of these different options to find something that works. That's why I, I typically just um, recommend just masking uh, manually because it can kind of, if you learn the tool set well enough, then you can just use it for any number of situations. That would be my recommendation. But it also kind of depends on what your geometry looks like and what you're uh, attempting to accomplish a little bit. As well as we need some holes for those straps to go into, as well as some trim around our bag. Let's do a quick little remesh on our bagaroonie. I want to see what this looks like with a 1K remesh. I want to see how, uh, how much it retains here for the larger shapes. And if it retains enough, I won't project anything. I have a feeling we might need like one or one or two projections. Uh, you know what? Nope, I think I'm good with that. So like I said, you know, we had a lot of those tighter creases earlier on, but they end up getting smoothed out later. So not, not really like a huge deal. Some of these are maybe overdone a little bit, but meh. I don't think it's the end of the world. End of Z world. Uh, what else? What else? Trim around the edge of the bag. For that, let's use, let's duplicate our bag, and then we'll use either the cube tube brush again, or something like the curve tube snap brush. Either one will work. I'll use my cube tube brush since I've been playing around with it already. Ooh, make sure that our Z intensity is all the way up. And essentially what I'm going to do, let's make sure our depth. Ah, you know what, I, I think I'll keep that. Let me make sure. Nope, nope, nope. I'm gonna move this depth right at zero or so. It doesn't have to be perfect. Essentially what that's going to do is make sure that the embed for that is just enough to where this will start looking like some trim. So let's, uh, let's do some quick Quick little trim around here. And if our geometry ends up being a little bit too complicated, a little bit too heavy in the polys, we can always lower that after the fact. And just kind of doing this by hand will also add to, oh, you know what? Here, let me swap my brush here really fast. Oh, of course, you're gonna be nasty. Gonna be mean. All right, I'll take that back. So the problem with my curve brush that I was just using the cube tube brush is that unfortunately, because it's a tri-parts welded brush. Oh, you know what? I already have this set up. Because it's a tri-parts welded brush, it cannot combine back on itself. But other curved brushes that are not tri-part welded brushes can in fact do that. So I will use a different brush to get a fairly similar effect really quick. 
Oh, nope. Come on. Where's that red line? There you go. If your brush is not snapping where you need it to, you can decrease that snap. Connect those up. Beautiful. You can decrease that snapping distance up in your curve. I believe it is which one? Uh, curve snap distance down here under curve modifiers. But let's accept that. So we have this basic kind of thing going on. And honestly, it's a little thick. It could be deflated and the poly count is also very high. So that is based on your curve step count there, which is uh, pretty dense for the curve tube snap brush, but it, it works for a lot of stuff. So let me just do a quick Z remesh really low, probably lower our poly count quite a bit. Ah, it's it's kind of making that a little bit too blocky. Let me take a look here. Adding in some extra loops that we do not need. There we go. You know what? I don't think I actually minded. Let me step back on, on this. I don't actually mind how uh, kind of warbly and messy that gets. Kind of adds to the, uh, to the bag a little bit. I think I'm fine with that. Just make sure here in the corners we got enough room. And we can do some more trim here on the bottom and then get these straight pieces for the sides. All right, where did our straps go? And of course this is ZRush 2019, so we have the luxury of creating folders. So I can make a folder for my bag, which is awesome. Just drag and drop this stuff in here. Which, for some of you, you're like, yeah, folders, cool, but... <laughs> yes, folders! <laughs> folders are amazing! Been wanting folders for a long time. Honestly, uh, <laughs> typically when I work, I'm not really like doing a ton of stuff in my subtool list, so for the most part, for me, it's like not that big of a deal, uh, but it's still nice to have. I, I definitely appreciate the folders. I just think it's funny how um, how horny people were for those folders. They were they were very horny for those folders. For me, I'm just like, yeah, folders, sure. <laughs> it's it's good, I guess. I'll take some folders. All right, let's see. I'm gonna add a bevel to this as well. And we'll go a little bit more thin, I think. Get a nice zippy. I'll just kind of like tuck this in here. Kind of hide the uh, the seam a little bit. And it's not really a zipper, right? It's kind of just the representation of that. It's just a strip of color in our uh, reference image over here. So not too crazy, nothing super complicated. Pretty simple. But our bag is already shaping up pretty quick here. Uh, let's do one more or a couple more things of trim on our bag. Continue here with this brush. And go a little bit smaller. Whoops. Something like that, sure. All right. Another thing that you can do with uh, curve brushes that's pretty cool, that you can actually draw them out a little bit larger so you get less resolution in your curve step. So the, the stroke will actually be a little bit smoother. And then what you can do is change your brush, uh, brush size. Man, I cannot say brush size. Uh, but then you can change your brush size after you draw out your curve, which is pretty cool. I'll show you an example of that in just a moment if you've never done that before.
So here you go. Grab our curve tube brush and I will draw out my curve. So it's snapping at less uh, points here because the curve is a little bit larger. And then I can change my draw size here back down to five. Just tap on my curve. And let me undo. It's being a little bit, oh, wrong brush. That's what's wrong. There we go. Just tap on that and we'll update on the fly. It's a pretty cool a little trick. And then I'll just use my move brush and just kind of tuck that up and in. And we'll just kind of hide that. Make it feel like it's all synced up there. And I have remembered the brush size that I used for each of these so that I can make them all uh, feel like they are the same. Draw size five, quick tap, bada boom, easy peasy. Not too hard to make a bag, like I said. Although our geometry is not playing super nice up here because I did a poor job and I drew it on top of the other curve. I thought I would try making it a little bit longer, but it ended up kind of biting me in the butt a little bit. But that's okay. We can fix it. We can always fix it. Uh, let's see. Thank you. Made the end caps, but they aren't perfectly flat. So I was using the smooth brush to flatten them a bit, but whenever I got too close to the edges, the edges got smoothed out too. Yes, yes, that does that does tend to happen. Uh, so you made some end caps. I'm not sure how you made the end caps, but for your geometry, they might have polygroups set up for you. So for instance, if you have geometry and you extrude it, I have two separate polygroups on it. So you can mask using polygroups if you're familiar with that. If not, just look up a quick YouTube tutorial. I probably have one on my channel. I actually, I know I do. Uh, as well as like closing holes and stuff like that. There's a bunch of uh, information for how you can work and mask with polygroups. But I don't know if you have that. Uh, check, and if you do, that's probably the best route to go. I'd recommend that. Uh, let's see. Brush modifiers, smooth brush modifiers. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't really think there's too much you can do with that. There are some brush mods that you can work with for um, if you have open geometry, which is a little nice to play around with uh, with your smooth brush. But that's only if the geometry is uh, cut open, like it's not uh, closed. And some open faces. So that's a little bit of a different situation. I don't know if there's anything else in there. There might be. I don't know everything about ZBrush, that's for certain. All right, one last little stroke here. And we will have our trim complete. And you know what? I think it's all a little bit too thick. Let's do deformation and we'll just inflate that a couple points or deflate that, I should say. Here, let's do uh, minus one. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, what else are we missing? It looks like there's maybe some additional stuff going on here on the sides, uh, underneath the strap, as well as kind of like some hole here for the strap to fit through. I'm not sure how I want to do the hole in the bag. I have a few ideas. 
but I don't really like the idea of sculpting it directly on the bag. I'm not a huge fan of that idea. Then they would all be uneven. Hmm. Unless, unless, let's see. Could maybe do something quick. Could do something with booleans as well. A bunch of options here. So I need to make sure that my symmetry is on for the other side, so that when I push this in, oh, I need a little bit of that going on, so a little bit of a dip in here, and then around the, whoops, around the bottom outside, like that, I'll do the opposite and just kind of pull out here. And it's getting a little messy, but that's okay. We'll make this work. All right, and then probably just some manual cleanup here. Play around with that. Probably smooth these out a little bit. Let's clean this up. And if we look at this curve right now, see how this kind of like gradually, wrong brush, kind of like gradually sweeps up a little bit at first. That makes it look like it's not being held tight enough. So again, if something, you know, it's got weight to it, it's gonna be nice and straight. So we really want to come in here and you know, make it feel like it it's being kind of swung as he's walking, so there's gonna be a lot of tension here. So shortest distance I'm gonna go. It's just a straight line. Let me play with that a little bit more. Kind of straighten that up. And let me make sure we have our orientation correct here. We don't. <laughs> uh, another great thing that we have with folders though, is that we can do a transpose set. As long as we have uh, everything visible. Cool. All right, so let me move that outside our big boy. Turn everything back on. Where's your head at, man? There we go. And in terms of scale, I actually think we got a little lucky here. I think we're pretty close. So this is gonna be at like a 45-ish degree angle. So let's go with maybe like 30. You know what? That's gonna be like dragging on the ground. So I will probably have to swing his arm back even further and then maybe inflate it to make sure it's matching the same silhouette. I'll have to play around with that to make sure that that's working. But you'll, you'll run into these kind of problems as, as you you move along here, but let's do some quick. Here, let me re uh, reorient this. Kind of rotate, match that a little bit closer. So you can reorient your object by clicking on that that mesh orientation button, or you can hold the Alt button while doing that, and it will reorient just the gizmo which is what I wanted there. All right, and then this is, 
Let's see, you're gonna be back here a little bit more. And somewhere around here. Let's scale this down. Teeny tiny bag. Oh. And you know what, maybe, maybe we can make that work. Maybe it won't need to be messed with too much. We'll see, we will see once we get there. But let's turn off our little transpose set. Switch back to our good friend, the transpose line. And yeah, there we go, cool. So we, we have our basic bag done. I guess we can very quickly apply some color, which would be super easy, of course. Grab a couple of different samples here. And just take some time to fill this in. Trying to find a good sample color for those straps. Oh, trying to get my mouse in there on one of those. That feels a bit closer. It's kind of like this. It might just be the orange next to it, but it, it, do, uh, it does feel more orange than red. I'm not positive on that though. Colors can confuse for certain. Uh, it looks like we maybe need some additional straps, like little line or trim there on the side, but I think that's fine for now. So cool, we got a hand and a bag done and we got like 45 minutes to spare. So we got some more time to do some more stuff. Uh, Steven, what's up, man? Uh, guess I'll pay more attention to the Folygon I'm subscribed to. <laughs> hey, that's me. Uh, his fist is larger than the bag in the reference. Uh, it definitely is, definitely is. Uh, let's see. So what else? What else do we want to do? I mean, we can sit here and keep playing with our hand. Go back to that for a little bit. Does anybody have any questions before we move on to something else or anything that you would like to see in particular? My time is your time tonight. I think I'll just add in a couple extra pieces here while we hang out. Like I said, we got time to spare. Let's see. I'm gonna do these little, um, Draw strings real quick. Make them a little flatter. I'll tell you what, this hood really needs some TLC, so maybe that's something that we can we can work on for a bit. Oh, you are way too thick. Let's do that. For uh, curved brushes that are simple like this, typically I find that it's easier to um, make them smaller than what you need, and then it's a little bit easier to inflate them, especially for cubes or like hex tubes or anything like that, because those are pretty easy to inflate. But once you need to deflate stuff, in particular around the end caps, it's where you run into a lot of problems. So I try not to deflate certain objects too often. Ah, and yeah, so this is what you end up getting with the um, curved tube snap brush. And you can fix this, it's just annoying to do it. It takes a bit of time. You have to delete some end caps and then bridge them. And I was doing this so often that I said, this is dumb, I'm done doing this. So I made my own brush, which is that cube tube brush. There we go. So now we have clean geometry. Like all things, you can manually, you know, poly model it. But <laughs> why do that when you can just make something that does it automatically? Uh, let's see. 
Did I use H polish to get the uniform look? Uh, I did not. I rarely ever use H polish, although I do have it down here on my uh, quick bar. I, I have not used the H polish brush a single time on this character. I'm not sure what you mean by the uniform look. You want to be, if you want to point out something specific, I can maybe tell you how I did uh, whatever it is. All right, let's see here for our draw strings. They're kind of like twisting a little bit. At least that's the feeling that I'm getting. Well, this guy's starting to shape up. He's getting there. I'm enjoying working on him. You know what? I, it, I just remembered. We got our shark doggo, and I never really rendered him. I should do a render of him before I forget, before he gets all dusty in his folder that I left him in. <laughs> I need to do something with that. But... Our tiger boy here is getting getting there. These are also asymmetrical. We'll do some quick tweaking here and there. And if I can, just like a little bit of thick to thin. Just a wee bit. Too much of a good thing is not always good. All right, so like I said, this hood is all over the place. It is a messy mess. So let's take a look at fixing that. Uh, B Rod, what's up? What's going on? Did you make any of the model in Maya? Nope, all ZBrush right here from a sphere. You can actually watch the. Uh, first part over on YouTube, over on the Pixelogic channel. But yeah, just started from a sphere. And yeah, started shaping everything up here in ZBrush. No, uh, no Maya, no nothing else. Uh, the straightness of the head. Can't think of the right word. Uh, the, the head, the straightness of the head. This boy is too chunky in the back. He's got a lot of chunk in the back. And I will probably get rid of some of that chunk. He is a chung chungus. Isn't that chungus? The Bugs Bunny meme? Yeah, I'll probably make him uh, more thin in the back. I I'm not sure if you're just referring to like how clean the form is. If that's what you mean, then uh, it's a combination of a lot of stuff. And the more you hang out here, the more I can kind of show you my workflow and you can ask questions and uh, I'll just continue talking about what I'm doing and what's going through my head. But uh, yeah, other than that, I don't, yeah, I don't really have too much to say. Yeah, I don't know, we'll continue on here. With, like I said, our hood next up. The straightness. Hmm. If anybody else has an idea. What what do you mean by the straightness? What do I want to do with this hood? That is an excellent question. I've blocked out kind of the major shape here, but really 
getting very messy. How low can we go? Turns out pretty dang low. I think I like that a bit more. We'll use that as our starting point. Continue sculpting on that a bit more. Uh, yes, clean. Okay, so that's what you meant. Is it mostly smooth? Uh, a little bit of the smooth brush, yeah. Uh, really, it's just uh, kind of the ability to control your form, man. Uh, <laughs> so like down here on the hand, I don't know if you just joined us. Uh, or if you've, you've seen me work before, but I have a YouTube channel full of stuff, uh, full of videos of me sculpting and talking about different processes and different tutorials, but uh, here, very quickly, we can run through the undos because this is the only thing with undos right now, other than our bag. So yeah, here. Here it is as a sphere, and I'll just kind of scrub through the undos very quickly. So. Uh, I start blocking out using the move brush, uh, some clay tubes brush, and some pinch. And really just kind of start pulling geometry out. Nothing too crazy here at all. Just kind of pushing, pulling polys, and being able to control your form. I mean, that's, that's really all it is. It's definitely something that you will get better at with practice. And it's like anything else. Just do it a lot, and eventually it will kind of click. And yeah, it's not like, it's not like, um, you know, other software. If you think about it in the sense of, you know, oh, how do I do that in Maya? Like, how do I do, uh, you know, some, some particular kind of, like, how do I add gravity to this object? It's like, okay, that's a toggle. You just turn that on, right? Well, think of it this way. It's like, how do I use this? How do I do that? It's not like, oh, well, you just use this brush. Uh, no, it's not. It's uh, that that's like saying like, well, how do you how do you like paint a a rock? Well, it's like, ooh, well, okay. There's a lot of fundamentals that you have to understand there. You have to understand uh, the the most basic principles of of sculpting and just kind of go from there. So in terms of this, it's just kind of blocking out the most basic shape as simply as I possibly could. Started from a sphere, push and pull around. I use DynaMesh a lot to just kind of remesh the uh, geometry. I also use Z Remesher a lot to kind of clean up stuff along the way. And you know, a combination of about all the brushes down here, typically the first five or so on average, uh, not really including the standard brush. I pretty much just use that as a paintbrush, a glorified paintbrush. At this point, I should just replace it with the paintbrush and ZBrush. But I do use the standard brush on occasion, so I keep it down there. But yeah, I mean, really, really, that's all it is, dude. Nothing, um, there's no secret. I know a lot of people do want, do want to know the secrets, but there's no secrets, and I'm sorry. <laughs> just kind of sculpt good. Do, do sculpting good. The, the answer, I guess. <laughs> All right, let's do more hood stuff. Check out his Gumroad stuff. Well, thank you, Z-Hawk. Yeah, if you, if you want to kind of get some higher quality stuff, I also have my Gumroad, gumroad.com slash polygon. Uh, these top three are some courses and tutorials. If you're brand new to ZBrush, I have my How to ZBrush course, as well as um, some more intermediate, which is the middle one. And some some more intermediate to advanced stuff, which is this uh, this one on the far left. So uh, maybe those are more up your alley. If you want to hear me talk more about stuff other than kind of just off the cuff, those are a little bit more uh, high effort instead of just kind of like a stream here. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's more your your alley. Like I said, YouTube channel, tons of free stuff over there too. Check it all out, dude. Go crazy. I made it for you. Uh, Wonder Toast, what's up? How did you get the smoothness and clean shape to the clothing? Well, I was kind of just talking about that because that's kind of what somebody was just asking. But yeah. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully I... I yeah. <laughs> that's not like a question that can be just, you know. Do this. Do A, B, and C. And you will, you will be there. Do A and you will be there. Do A and you will see that you will be. Now I'm just. 
I'm just saying letters. But yeah, stick around for any amount of time and I, I think you'll probably get a pretty good handle on my sculpting process. My sculpting process is not super complicated by any means. A child could learn this, in my opinion. It's really just like four brushes. <laughs> it's just a matter of putting in the time, doing the grind. Which I know is not something a lot of people like to hear, but it is the truth, and I will not lie to you. I love you, I will not lie to you. I might lie to you. I, I reserve that right. <laughs> Uh, is, it seems pretty late for you. Is this a new time? No, no. I stream, uh, stream every Tuesday at 6 p.m. here on the eastern, uh, east coast, eastern time zone. Three, uh, three ZBrush time, three central. Uh, anything good or amazing in ZBrush 2019? There are some really cool things. If you check out my YouTube channel, I have tutorials. Where's my browser? I have tutorials on all the new, the new doodads. Uh, seven videos in total, YouTube slash Polygon. Check it out. I go into detail about how you can use all the, the nifty new things, like the folders, the camera, the new Z remesher, intersection masker, Z color, NPR rendering, etc. Snapshot 3D. Snapshot 3D is really, really dope. There are some cool things that you can do with that for certain in terms of uh, hard surface poly modeling. Check it out, man. Some good stuff. You want to know the brush? Did you use Trim Adaptive? <laughs> OMG, Folly, tell me the damn brush. Uh, to sculpt on the head, I used a combination of the clay tubes brush. I used a combination of the Trim Dynamic brush. I also used the Move brush without AccuCurve on. I also used the Pinch brush as well, as well as a combination of some poly modeling techniques. Uh, so this was a cylinder that I extracted and pulled into this basic silhouette. One, two, three. So very basic silhouette. That was a cylinder. And then I just continued to sculpt up from there using those four main brushes. If you want to know the other brushes that I use, they're all down here for your convenience. I don't really keep them down there for me because in all honesty, I have hotkeys that I use for all of them. My numpad, uh, not my numpad, my number key row. One, two, three, four, five. It's like a first person shooter. <laughs> Keep all my, my guns, my guns on my numbers. But yeah, really simple stuff, man. Pretty default brushes. But my brushes are, of course, a little different. I've shown off uh, the differences on my brushes many a time on stream, so I will not do so right now unless somebody specifically wants to see. But let me uh, let me fix our hood here. So like for instance, I'm literally just using the move brush right now, but I am also using it with back face masking. Whoop. I'm using it actually with back face masking, which is an auto masking set, uh, auto masking tool, as well as masking so that I don't pull out on that edge there. OMG, tell me your secrets already. Give them to me. All right, I need to fill that little dip in a little more. Uh, let's see. I'm probably gonna have to just remesh this anyway. Let me step back. Give me that mask. And that's too rounded, obviously, from the silhouette. Speaking of learning fundamentals and sculpting, though, I was going to mention this here soon over on my channel. I've been talking about it a little bit on streams, but I have a new course that's coming out that I've been working on for the past six months. 
and it is all about sculpting stylized and appealing characters and the fundamentals necessary to do so. So if that sounds like something that might interest you, I will have some more info on that here soon. The course is opening up for registration on March 30. Let me make sure this is correct. Look at the calendar. Yes, on March 31st, which is just in uh, a few weeks here, less than a few weeks. So it's coming up real soon. So stick around or maybe follow me on my YouTube channel if you want to hear about that in the future. Or I guess subscribe is the, the word that people say. I don't think I have, and maybe someone who hang, has been around on my YouTube channel for a while, I don't think I have ever, I pride myself in this, <laughs> I don't think I've ever uh, at the end or any point in a YouTube channel said, don't forget to subscribe. If I've said it, it was ironically, of course. I think that is just the dumbest thing in the world. Not the dumbest thing in the world, but one of. <laughs> no offense to those that do, I guess, but I think it's pretty silly. Like, oh no, I totally forgot to subscribe to your channel. Nah, that's cool. All right, I'm just setting up some quick masking so that I can fix my geometry. And let's see if I did a good job. Whoa. I missed a little spot down here. And then I like to use back face masking on my mask pen as well to make sure that that doesn't go through to the other side. Look at that precision! And by precision, I mean lack thereof. Close enough in masking typically is, is close enough. It'll do. Let me, I, my, my trim brush is wanting to um, sample some other stuff here. I'll try to make this work. It's gonna be a little bit messed up though. Essentially, whenever you have geometry or multiple subtools kind of overlapping or really close to each other, your brush will try to sample those. And it's particularly noticeable on trim brushes, which is what I'm using right now. And it's very frustrating. And you can kind of turn it off if you, um, I think it's under your picker. If you turn on once Z under depth, you can kind of make it work, but for something that's curved like this, it's not gonna give me the effect that I want. So maybe that's something that you can experiment with if you've never seen that before. Let's see, we're, we're getting there. Let me do a, hmm. let me do a thing. Try to make this work. Hmm, that's nice. Hmm, how do I wanna do this? Problem solving 101. Let's just do something here. I'm gonna hide some of this geometry in there. I was, I was trying to close the hole around there, but this essentially gives me the same effect. I need to play around with this geometry a little bit. Hopefully I can close this though. See if it'll be stupid as well, it will. Dynamesh is typically a little bit better at closing holes. Hmm. Let's think. Uh, th I'm splitting these off, or I'm, I'm attempting to split them off right now so that I can control the separation here a little bit more easily. If 
find that easier to do with separate pieces of geometry. So maybe we'll just reverse, reverse, reverse. Try this again. Where on the East Coast am I? I am in Cincinnati, Ohio. So not on the coast, but I'm in the Eastern time zone. Don't believe I said I'm on the coast. Maybe I did, I don't know. I don't keep track of everything I said, but the video does. Scroll back, let's find out. What am I drinking? Does it make you sculpt better? This is my beautiful hydro flask gifted to me by my girlfriend for my birthday last year because I used to have a Contigo. Some of you might remember that. And uh, I carry my water bo bottle with me literally everywhere I go. But yes, just water, nothing special. <laughs> Mike's secret stuff. Isn't that what it's called in Space Jam? Something like that. But yes, Folly's secret stuff is just water, unfortunately. <laughs> I, drink, uh, I drink a crap ton of water. Probably too much. Hyperhydration. Alright, I think I have this at a point where I can manipulate this a little bit easier now. Let me see if this will let me dynamesh this without freaking out. Alright, that's fine. Because this is getting remeshed anyway. So I'm gonna destroy my geometry so that I can get to something more clean. How much? How much what? Oh, how much do one of these cost maybe? I used to have it on my uh, list of tools. It's probably still there. Oh, for the course. How much for the course? You will see on March 31st. So it's a seven week long course. Each week has lectures, live sessions, uh, homework, and Homework feedback each week. Personalized homework uh, feedback critique, essentially. Uh, so seven week course, and it is six hundred dollars. Six hundred USD, United States dollar, dollars, as they call them. But yeah, I'm very excited about it. And again, it'll be on March thirty first. My zero mesh is being dumb here. But yeah, if you have any questions about the course, I would be happy to answer them. Unfortunately, Pixelogic does not uh, give us moonshine, <laughs> no. Uh, nor would I want it. I think I've had moonshine like once uh, in my entire life. And I don't remember it being particular. You know what? No, I take that back because they actually sell it in jars at Party Source. I've had... Uh, moonshine from a semi-reliable source only once in my life. More reliable sources uh, more frequently, though. Uh, but no, no, I would not, I, I'd not prefer the, the moonshine. Now, if Pixelogic was supplying us with some, some yummy beers, or, or some bourbon. I live close to that bourbon trail, so it's near and dear to my heart. Now, I'd be down with that, but moonshine, why moonshine? That's so specific. <laughs> All right, now I can destroy this. Beautiful. And by beautiful, I mean, yes, destruction. All right, so essentially what I'm doing, for those who are maybe just joining us, I'm working on the hood, but I have separated the part that is the flat and the part that kind of flips up here, the actual hood, into two separate meshes. I also do this on collars for um, uh, the around the neck for like shirts and stuff. Uh, it just kind of keeps things a little bit more manageable here. And I originally just kind of carved in to create this shape. 
which got us pretty far, but there was a lot of inaccuracies here that we want to fix. So now we are getting a little closer here, and this will work out. Drink of vodka while working. I'm not much of a vodka fan. I don't think vodka tastes very good. But uh, it's pretty cheap, so. Or at least most vodka is pretty cheap. Maybe that's why it kind of tastes like nail polish. <laughs> I there there are some good vodka, vodkas. I grew up around a um, a plant called Seagram's, and the plant always had this very unique smell. And I can remember it to this day. I, it, it smells like nothing else other than Seagram's, but they have a Seagram's whiskey and I believe a vodka. And I believe that they are still making it. I'm not sure. I know that the plant maybe shut down and somebody else bought it a long while back, but I, I can't really remember. But I believe they still make it. I think I had some within the past couple years. It's been a while though. And like I said, I don't really drink vodka too often. Not my uh, not my go-to. My go-to is just water, literally, all the time. And uh, on my personal stream, we actually ended up making a list called Beers for Ben that uh, had a bunch of beers that people wanted me to try, or just drinks in general that people were suggesting. And I also suggested a few drinks. I think I suggested uh, uh, Left Hand Milk Stout, which is one of my favorites. Uh, uh, another beer called Hobgoblin, which is really good. And then I suggested one called Sweaty Betty, which is the most disgusting thing I've ever tried in my entire life. And I've experienced this pain, so I feel like I should share this pain with you people. <laughs> you need to try Sweaty Betty. It is, whew, it is, it is something else. <laughs> I think the name alone should, uh, should give you enough information about <laughs> what this beer is. But of course, only if you're, you're of age. Only if. Scrimshaw. Scrimshaw, I do not know. I will have to add that to the list and check it out. I've never heard of Scrimshaw. But I might recognize it if I see it. ZBrush Live does have a streaming schedule. If, uh, if you just go Google uh, ZBrush, oh, oh, oh wow, ZBrush Live. Not live boolean, but just ZBrush Live. And uh, yeah, here, we'll just go to the main site. I think, yeah, broadcast calendar. If you click on that link, it goes to it. But if you go on their main website, which you will see me going to their website right now, uh, you can go to schedule, but a boom. And there you go. There's me, and after me is Jose. So the whole calendar, typically, uh, I, I think it's set out for the entire month, which it looks like it is and they update that uh, pretty close to the end of the month as well. So the whole thing should be on there for you to check out, as well as if you go to the uh, YouTube, uh, Pixel or the Pixelogic YouTube channel, uh, they have a bunch of the past streams on there. And all the streams that I do and video tutorials, etc., that I make also go up on my YouTube channel, which is just YouTube slash Foligon. Easy enough. All right. Let's do something with this hood. Come on. Come on, hood boy. Hood rat. Hood hood tiger. I don't really know what a hood rat is, but I've heard it. I've heard it said on occasion. Whoa, what is what's going on here? Ah, we got an accidental mask. I was uh, subdividing, so you can actually mask a part of your geometry and only subdivide certain areas. I would not recommend doing it unless you have a really good reason. It's not uh, super beneficial for, for most things, I should say. All right. Now, this hood seems to be a pretty thin fabric. And I need to blend this arm into
into the body a bit better. But I need to do the other arm before I do that, because I'd like to do both of those at the same time. Let's see. This line is a bit more straight going out this way. If we look at this, kind of just a straight shot. There's also some asymmetry stuff going on here, but that's easy enough to take care of once we um, actually get into a sim. Right now we got like a couple things in asim, but for the most part, you know, we'll worry about that once we get into posing. How are we doing on time, by the way? Uh, got about 10 minutes. I think we're fine. We'll keep going here. Absolutely, no worries. Happy to help. The Kana, what's up? You did not miss it. Well, we're actually kind of in the end of the stream, so maybe. I don't know if by this you mean the entire thing. In that regard, maybe you missed a little bit, but that's okay. Like I said, it all goes up on the, uh, the YouTube channel, no worries. All right, so I need um, to carve in here, get a little bit more distance. Where's my sharp soft? Love this brush. One of my faves. Not a default brush, but I would say it's comparable to something like a, uh, kind of like a damn standard and a standard brush combined, almost. It's just, I, I use it for stuff like folds and all sorts of things. In this case, kind of carving in around this mesh. I need to get this edge to be quite a bit tighter. So let's come in here. Hmm. Yes, triple C thick, thank you. Thank you for correcting yourself, always the triple C. I did, uh, I did delete the juicy and thick because it was, it was getting a little distracting. It was getting in the way. But it still lives on in our hearts. For those who did not see me working on this character previously, let me uh, load in an old version where <laughs> we had triple C thick on his uh, on the front of his shirt here, which I only added after we of course put Juicy on his butt, which was suggested maybe by Kana, I can't remember, but it was a very good idea, obviously. And then uh, the, the thick was just added on top. If you guys wanna play around with text in ZBrush, by the way, uh, you can use your Z plugin menu, which is just up here, and go into your text in 3D vector shapes plugin, which is a very cool plugin. Uh, you can create text right off the bat, just start typing, use all the fonts on your machine and play with that. Or you can even load in, I believe it takes SVGs, yes, SVG files. And I've never used the SVG editor, so I don't know what all capabilities you can do with that. But I, I would probably prefer to edit any SVG files in, uh, in Illustrator, but I don't know. I don't know what the tool set has. I just love me some Illustrator. All right. So we are kind of nearing the end of our, our time here. So if you guys have any last questions, shout them out now. Even if it's unrelated to what we're specifically doing right now. No big deal. And yeah, there's definitely some stuff that's gonna have to change here. But we've started pushing it in a much better direction just by um, kind of reworking and splitting that off. That's starting to get there. But we did do uh, some stuff down here with kind of getting our hand into a good, good basic place. I can kind of mirror that over to the other side. It's not gonna be positioned correctly because our sleeve is way over here. Let me clear my canvas. 
So uh, we did uh, quite a bit of stuff with our hand as well as kind of creating this bag down here, if we can zoom in on that, uh, which was all done uh, very quickly. This kind of stuff is very simple and fast to do in ZBrush. And there's a lot more that we can do to this to kind of take it to the next level and make sure that it's kind of polished and looking closer to our 2D concept. Again, which is by Dan Kelby. You should definitely go check out more of Dan's work. Um, but yeah, we've been working on the hood for a little bit, just kind of chatting, answering some cues, and yeah. Next Tuesday, I will be here, same time, same place, six, uh, or, uh, sorry, three, three, uh, three p.m. over on the West Coast. I always use my own time zone, but, uh, the schedule, the schedule should say here, let's see. Yes, 3 p.m. PST next next Tuesday. So come and hang out. It'll be a good time. Make sure you stick around for Jose's stream. He'll be streaming in just an hour after I stop. And he's working on conceptualization for characters and creatures uh, for production, it looks like. So that's pretty cool. So stick around. It'll be fun. Let's see what we got here with our little strappy do. Maybe tuck that up in there. There will be a lot more that we do with this guy kind of moving forward. And I might even, if I, f if I make or find some free time, I could maybe do a little bit more on this dude. Just kind of some simple stuff to clean up this hood a bit more. Some of the boring, boring things, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, you could put his name on the bag. That's not a bad idea. That'd be fun to do. Uh, I believe you're talking about Dan. The, uh, the 2D concept artist. I like that. I like that. That's a good idea. All right. I'm not seeing any other questions. So like I said, I think that's going to be a pretty good place for us to hit pause for tonight. Again, stick around for Jose's stream in just an hour. And check out that schedule if you guys want to see who's, uh, who's coming up here in the future in the next uh, month. But yeah, if you want to check out more of my stuff, it's just Follygon, uh, or, or just Google Follygon, you'll find all my stuff. I've got my YouTube channel, as well as uh, my Gumroad, gumroad.com slash Follygon. Uh, Zhawk was mentioning my courses and tutorials, which uh, I always appreciate you guys sharing, which is super nice of you. I'll just slap the URL here in chat because I know it's hidden up here at the top of the screen. So some courses and tutorials at the top. Uh, from right to left, beginner to a little bit more advanced, so uh, kind of kind of take your pick there, as well as some brushes, materials, base meshes, all the stuff that I use uh, in ZBrush myself, as well as my updated custom UI for ZBrush 2019, if some people are interested in that. I get asked about that a little bit more frequently than I would have thought. But yeah, uh, I, think, I think that's it, guys. So I will see you uh, next Tuesday, same time, same place as well as if you guys want to come check out my YouTube channel and say hello. So, yeah, that's it. All right, you guys have a great rest of your night, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.